from Mean Girls to the Color Purple. My name is Regina George. Now that your attention, here's what you man need to hear. Iconic movies readapted as musicals are taking over theaters. Are they giving people what they want, or is Hollywood just getting lazy? GBH News' Callie Crossley, host of Under the Radar with Callie Crossley, joins me now with her take. Callie, what is with this glut of remakes? <laughs> Uh, and you're going to see more okay. because this is the year of 32 wow. re repeats, sequels, reboots, spinoffs. That's the whole deal. Now, why is it happening? Yeah. Because we're in a moment in general, culturally, of nostalgia. The shrinks say it's comforting to us. We know we can count on certain things. Well, Hollywood has taken notice and said, if you're going to buy vinyl and old clothes from the 90s and you love the old songs, let's make sure we go back to characters and movies you know about. Give the people what they want. Give them exactly what they want. And mm -hmm. so uh, you will be seeing every month of this year, of 2024, some of these prequels, sequels, anything attached to a story you already know about. Um, and that's a built-in audience for Hollywood, right? So mm. what are we going to see? Uh, let's start with that. We saw just uh, mm -hmm. Color Purple, Mean Girls. What else is coming? Well, let's, let's take a pause on Mean Girls and Color Purple because the remake of those is really interesting. They've been remade three times now, from the book to the Broadway musical and now to the movie musicals. A lot of people not so happy, including myself, about some of the adaptations taken with the movie musicals. They dropped some pitiful, pivotal songs in both Mean Girls and Color Purple, added some other stuff. Eh, not so sure that that works. But here's the thing that's so interesting about it. When they promote these movies, they don't tell you they're musicals. If you just see the trailer, it looks like great film. That's uh, right. Something I recognize, characters I know about, but you don't know the music is in there until you get into the theater, and that's deliberate. That's right. In fact, <laughs> Paramount's worldwide head of marketing said, hey, we don't want to say musical too loudly because it turns people off. I mean, we really are far from the 50s and the 60s when people would go to see a musical. This is It's risky to say musical now. It Willy is. Wonka, another one. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. I will say, I don't know about Willy Wonka, but for Mean Girls and for Color Purple, there is emotional content in the songs that build, or should build, let me say. Uh, so it's not a musical that people usually get annoyed with, which, why are they singing in the middle of this? It has nothing to do with the rest of the plot, so it seems. It's very well connected, um, and these Actors and singers, I mean, Renee Rapp, Taraji P. Henson, come on, Fantasia, Barina, come on. These are great singers. So you will not be disappointed in the quality of the singing um, and even its emotional placement in the song. But that's just one thing that's happening. So taking Color Purple, the director of Blitz Bazawul, Ghanaian director, musician in his own right, he talked about the need to make this a joyful story. You're not buying it. What, yeah. what, what do you see behind the, the, the sort of motivation to take that story, maybe downplay some of the trauma, focus on the individual uplift? Do you, you're not buying it. Well, what I say is that, remember, they're trying to attract people to stories that they know and feel comfortable with. That's the whole point of it, to get you back in the theater. You know, they lost a lot of money during COVID. They're just recouping. Maybe if things go right by mid-2024, they'll start to see some of that. But it's nowhere near where it was before. So in sell telling people, it's a softer take on some of the trauma you may remember. That seems like it would make people more approachable. When in fact, the whole story has such an emotional uh, content and foundation that if you start taking little chunks out of it, like some kind of, you know, psychiatric zynga, <laughs> you know, right. you end up with something else. Right. Um, and people are saying the same thing about the Mean Girls thing. Now, I didn't never saw Mean Girls on Broadway. So for me, watching the movie seemed pretty good, but I take the point of folks who saw it on Broadway and see it's not quite what it was. Let me note that also um, there are some studios that realize that because they lost so much during the COVIDs, they're going to go back now, like Disney Plus, and films that were already streamed, they're bringing them back to the theater for a theatrical release. So you've got Soul, you've got Luca. They're bringing all these movies back because you never saw them in the theater, and they're thinking, 
You know, you saw them on streaming. It's kind of familiar to you. Once more, we're going to do that. And, so to, and the business uh, yeah. projections are that if this path continues, that things will pick up mid-year? Yeah, because the, allegedly we'll be drawn into it. Just some of the, the sequels, prequels, whatever. Um, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, Dune Part 2. Everybody's been waiting for that. Godzilla vs. Kong, The New Empire. Uh, on and on. And Bad Boys 4, for example. Uh, Kung... Kung Fu Panda 4. See how many iterations we've already had, Liz? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're making the case. Let's pause on Bad Boys 4 mm -hmm. for a second because this is significant maybe for yes. Will Smith. Um, it's maybe one of the first major drops since the Academy Awards slap. In fact, he said one major movie. So the slap happened, then Emancipation came out pretty closely right after that didn't get the kind of response that the studios thought it would and probably would have had there not been the slap scandal. Um, so in a way, he's done some other things. This movie, Bad Boys 4, is going to be kind of the biggest thing he's done since the slap. And these are characters that people loved. You know, Bad Boys 3 was supposed to be it. It was the final chapter or whatever they said. But now it's so interesting that they decided to bring it back because they know it's a winner, that they don't even have a title for it. They can't figure out what the title is. It's just happening. So it's an opportunity for Will Smith to be seen in speaking of softer, kinder, gentler situation, and he's uplifted by having his buddy on screen, Martin Lawrence. So it's going to be a fun movie. I would say even with people being very unhappy with him still, I predict that that movie will draw audiences. And do you think this is going to get those butts in the movie theater yeah, seats? I do think so. So is this part of that calculation that we go with what we know, it'll bring in the money? Why won't people stay parked at home? Well, because um, some of these are best seen on a big screen. I mean, I have to say, looking at my own habits, I've not gone back to the theater as much as I would have. Mm -hmm. But I recognize and remember what it was like to see some of those on the big screen. So I could be tempted if, let's go back to Bad Boys 4, Wow, that's a franchise. I love the, the interaction together. It's a lot of explosions and crazy um, action stuff that happens in that movie. Um, even Kung Fu Panda 4. I'll take that. <laughs> I, I, okay, Callie. Uh, Dune 2. Uh, yeah, there's a exactly. case. See, there's that's a right. big screen yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. and Inside Out 2 is coming. Oh. So these are movies that, you know, you, you can really enjoy on the big screen. And I do think there'll be draws. And that's exactly what Hollywood is counting on. This is not not to say there are not some original movies coming out, like The Book of Clarence. It's one of them that's coming out. Very different kinds of stuff. Are audiences willing to risk it to go to the theater? I don't know. My prediction will be Book of Clarence will be on streaming pretty soon, and that's where it's, it'll find its audience. We did have an interesting flurry of independent films. Yes. Can you, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, during COVID, what the reason why we have such a glut now of all these, you know, sequels and reboots is because there, some of them were already done, some were, were in process, and they held them because they didn't want you to see them except on screen. Um, no one could predict how intense the streaming was going to be so that people feel so comfortable now. They have to debate whether they want to go to the theater. So they were thinking, we'll hold it, then by the time we get ready to go, you'll, you'll be ready to go back to the theater. But what that provided was an opportunity for other films by which they would not have put much support to get a chance. People may remember the film Minari. That was just sitting there, ready to go. It wasn't going to get any of the support that it got. You recall that it ended up getting Oscar nominations and wins, a lot of attention. Many other small films by independent um, uh, directors and writers got a chance because there was a space left open. And these were spaces that the, that the studio said, Wh whatever, just fill it up because we're not using our, we're not blowing our big stuff. So yeah. one of the first out of the box in this repeat reboot is Mean Girl. Girls. Young Girls in Color doing? Purple. Yeah. Mean Girls uh, broke the box office practically this past weekend. They're expecting it to continue to do well. Uh, Color Purple broke box office records, actually, on Christmas Day, which was its opening. It's dropped off since. Um, I predict it'll have a healthy life on streaming as well. Uh, and we'll see, even if I'm unhappy with some of the choices that the director made. Uh, it was still a good film and a lot of good acting and singing and directing. So you might quibble. We might quibble. Shows a lack of imagination, but it's dollars in the bank. So well, it does know, seem to be that they, they're getting what they were looking for. And can I tell you, I'm nostalgic. 
You know, what did Yogi Bear say? It's deja vu all over again. There you go. I'm with it. All right. Well, I hope we have you on all over again. Thank you very much, Callie. Thanks.